Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back for another Coffee Talk. And in this one, I want to talk about that Samus Aran is a transgender woman article. There's so many problems with this article. Uh, they take an offhand comment that was made in 1994 when asked if there was anything about Samus that wasn't known. Uh, Hirofumi Matsuoka, I think I said that right, who helped work on the original character design for her, claimed that she wasn't a woman, but instead a new half. And normally I wouldn't give a shit about an article like this. Everybody's allowed to have opinions and theories about whatever, but what's pissing me off is if you have a different opinion or you present facts, these social justice warriors are like coming out with like the most off-the-wall shit. And here's just, I'm not going to name names, but here's a series of tweets here. Uh, somebody put, she was not, or talking about Samus, she was not physically male when she was three and her parents were killed. And somebody responded, I haven't seen this. Are you saying the genitals of a three-year-old were shown? Because if so, that's fucking disgusting. If not, then how would you know birth assigned gender of a third three-year-old? In another series of tweets, and I'm going to paraphrase these ones because it kind of gets a little scattered. Somebody put, look at the replies. The mere suggestion a beloved character could be trans is always met with such defensiveness. I mean, it's really just a suggestion from one of the creators. Requiring proof is hugely problem problematic. Cis people don't need to prove cisness. Heterosexual peeps don't need to prove straightness. And this was the best one. This came from Brianna Wu herself. Yeah, I wrote this. Samus is totally trans. Katie Bat and I, or at Katie Bat and I, walked through all the evidence. Just accept it. It's canon. No, it's not. There is no canonicity to this argument whatsoever, and I will tell you why. First and foremost, the original game was based on the style and the atmosphere of Ridley Scott's Alien film. And uh, God, I'm terrible with Japanese names. The series co-creator, Yoshio Sakamoto, recalled that they were partway through the development process and one of the staff members said something along the lines of like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if it turned out that the person inside the suit was a woman? So they voted on this idea and they decided that that was a cool idea. And, you know, to keep everything a secret, the game's instruction manual refers to her as a male to keep the reveal at the end a surprise. And they did try throughout the course of the series not to like turn her into a sex object. Originally her image was based on Sigourney Weaver. That's how much they drew from uh, the Alien film. Uh, they had a little bit of Kim Basinger mixed in there but you know the core essence of the character was she was basically Ripley. Now where a lot of this article doesn't hold any weight is because Samus's backstory has been pretty comprehensively covered in official media. Official media. The e-manga covers her origins. She was born and raised on a mining planet when she was a child, and the planet was raided by space pirates, led by Ridley, which is why she has such a uh, fear of him and why she has that like little bit of that uh, like breakdown when she sees him and other him, and we're not getting into the quality of the games here, but bear with me here. He killed her parents, and they destroyed the planet. So obviously she was orphaned. She was found by the Chozo, who brought her home to their planet Zebes. She was infused with Chozo DNA to give her a strong resistance to foreign environments, and then they trained her as a warrior. They provided her with the power suit to protect her, and that's why she's as big as she is. You know, that was one of the arguments. Was she's six foot three and 198 pounds? She's transgender. No, she's six foot three and 198 pounds because she was infused with an alien species DNA. A species that is large and despite all that you can't you can't discuss that with Wu or any of these other people that support Wu's article because if you disagree with the article then you're a trans folk and that's what really pisses me the fuck off because evidence suggests that nothing in Brianna Wu's article is factual just because a developer made an offhand comment does not make it fact everything that has been presented in official lore proves otherwise she was born a girl she was a little girl in all media and all depictions of her childhood and she's still very female looking you know and regardless of her size you know that's like saying okay a, a woman can't be over six feet tall 
There's plenty of women that are over six feet tall. Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones, she's like six foot three. Does that mean she's transgender? You know? Um, I'm sure there's probably some female athletes that are over six feet tall. I don't follow sports, so I can't really think anything anybody off the top of my head. But I mean, to use that as an argument, I mean, that's just showing how fucking thin your argument is. And there's no facts to back this up. The argument could be made that if, if, if Wu wants to take this offhand comment this developer made that she's a new half, if you want to take it as fact, here's the fact. Maybe he meant she's trans species because she has the DNA of the Chozo infused in her. Hmm. Anyways, uh, you know, it's just, I just can't believe how stupid people get about shit like this. I understand people want more diverse leads and games and stuff like that, but to take things that have been established for 20, 30 years and try to, like, grasp at some straws and be like, look, just, you know, like, the other thing that pisses me off, like, the whole, like, in the next Zelda game, Link should be a girl. No, Link shouldn't be a girl. And I'm not saying The Legend of Zelda shouldn't have a female protagonist, but taking an established character and gender swapping them, to me that's just fucking lazy, you know? And if... My thing is, if you truly want to see a Legend of Zelda game with a female protagonist, there's already a strong female presence in the game. Make Zelda the protagonist. Make her the playable character. There's no reason she couldn't be. If the story is done right, she could easily be the player character. Uh, if you played Hyrule Warriors, she was fucking badass in that, you know? But, you know, I'm not going to go on and on and on about this, but it just really pissed me off that, first, like, I wouldn't have had a problem if they would have just wrote the article and they're like, you know, kind of like how Game Theory has their videos where they, they present some things and they're like, it's just a theory. You know, if she would have said that, or if they would have came out and just said, it's a theory, that's it, nothing more. But to try to pass it off as fact, and then basically call people transphobic because they disagree with your supported, or your supposed fact, that's just, that's what really gets me fucking fired up. And normally, you know, a year ago or so, I probably wouldn't have made a video like this, but I'm just tired of this fucking shit. I'm so fucking tired of it. Play the goddamn game, have fun with it, and there's nothing wrong with criticizing things or anything like that, but Jesus fucking Christ, calm the fuck down. People are just, in a nutshell, people are just fucking pussies anymore, and I'm tired of everybody pushing their fucking agendas and having to have her fucking meltdown over the dumbest bullshit. So in closing, Samus is, has been, and probably always will be a female. She's not transgender.